This is Mark Venn with Reflection and Prayers for Palm Sunday. As usual, I shall be using a liturgy adapted from the Iona community. Shall we start with some devotional music? Jesus is coming, he's riding on a donkey. Shout Hosanna. Open the gates, open the ancient doors. Shout Hosanna. Wave the branches, spread out your coats. Shout Hosanna. Peace in heaven, glory in highest heaven. Shout Hosanna. Lead us into Holy Week. We tell your story, we follow in your footsteps. Lead us into Holy Week. We walk towards the city, we wait in the garden. Lead us on to holy ground. We journey towards death, we hope for resurrection. Lead us into holy joy. O living God, age after age, the children of dust make their way to holy places to seek you. Yet you are closer than hands or feet. In temples and in churches, people make sacrifices and offerings but what you seek is the love and well-being of your children your word promises that those with hands whose hands are clean and whose hearts are pure can climb the heavenly hill but who are we to do that on our journey through life our hearts and our hands become stained and dirtied if we have stretched out hands in greed or lust or love of money, Lord, cleanse us by your mercy. If our hearts have been sullied by pride or resentment, Lord, cleanse us by your mercy. If we have turned aside from our pilgrimage to follow the world's ways or to seek false gods or spirits other than your Holy Spirit, Lord, cleanse us by your mercy. Lord, you forgive the sins of all who turn to you in sincerity. You cleanse the penitent heart from all uncleanness. Lord, set our course according to your word, so that we may take up afresh the challenge of the journey to the holy city. Give us new strength to follow you on your way, so that even we may ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in the holy place through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalm, Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, His mercy endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, I will go through them. And I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. 
for I will praise you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It was marvellous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. O give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. reading from Mark chapter 11. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you and as soon as you have entered it you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it. And immediately you will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing, loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest! And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. A reading from Mark, well-known account of the entry into Jerusalem by Christ, riding on a borrowed colt. What I'd like to do is just consider this very briefly from three different viewpoints. Firstly, Christ. He came to Jerusalem. How did he come? Well, knowing what awaited him there, you might have expected him to be fearful, but he came openly publicly, cheerful and unafraid. He knew those who were there who were out to get him, but he came openly unafraid. He came lowly, with no state, on a borrowed colt. Perhaps he had an eye to custom here, 
In the Old Testament, the judges used to ride on white asses and their sons on ass colts. Asses were used in those days for travel rather than horses. Horses were for great men or for kings and used for war. So perhaps Christ was coming in the manner of Old Testament judges, coming as the judge of Israel. But he came with no grandeur, no trappings. He also came in fulfilment of prophecy. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 says, Your king comes, gentle and riding on a donkey. There was no saddle, clothing was used instead, and the disciples and the crowd. So he came to Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem he went directly to the temple. Again fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. Malachi 3 says, The Lord who you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even though it wasn't quite the Messiah that many were hoping for. Well, we are servants of God. We live our lives on his business, on his work. Are we always open? Are we always cheerful? Are we always unafraid? Whatever life may throw at us, whatever difficulties we encounter. How keen are we on trappings, on status, on admiration and wanting adulation? Are we happy like Christ, taking the form of a servant? Secondly, the crowd. Many, obviously, were pleased to see Jesus, caught up in the enjoyment of it, swept along. They improvised with clothing for a saddle and soft walking for the colt by laying their coats on the, on the ground, cutting down branches and waving them, singing Hosanna. Hosanna means save, we pray thee and was an exclamation of praise, an accepted exclamation of praise. Again in fulfilment of prophecy, Psalm 18 as we had earlier on, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Do we catch the mood of things? Do we join in? Do we get swept along? Sometimes we can be swept along for good. I'm thinking of Captain Tom last year hoping to raise a thousand and ending up with 30 million equally being swept along can be evil we know how easily a mob can turn to evil a peaceful demonstration turns into a riot looting and pain and suffering and the crowd we have in our reading are caught up crying Hosanna and yet in a few days they are caught up differently, crying, crucify. So let us all catch the mood and join in where it's appropriate, but with a reason, doing what is right. And more generally, it's right that we should be involved in current affairs, seeking to put God's point of view, God's moral standard. It means writing to MPs, about television programmes, for example, which are so against the moral standards. It's right that we should be joining in, not keeping ourselves to ourselves, but putting Christ's and God's way. And finally, the disciples. Yes, like the crowd, they were caught up, they were swept along, I think also there would have been quite a bit of joy in their hearts, seeing their master, their leader, so honoured and so exalted. The disciples were given a task to do. Go to the village and untie the colt and bring him to me. And if anybody asks you, say, the Lord has need of him. And I was imagining how I would feel if the vicar told me to go into the next village and bring back the car that was in the marketplace. Strange request from Jesus. Illegal instruction, perhaps? 
But no, the disciples did it. They were challenged. They said what they were told to say and they were fine. The owner released it. And we can be sure and positive that when Jesus asked us to do something, he will give us strength and the tools to carry it out. This coming week we remember again Christ's faithfulness, dying for us, going to the cross for our sins. Remember again the sorrow of Good Friday, the desolation of Saturday, but leading to the joy of Easter. So what are we being asked to do at the moment by Jesus? We can be sure that whatever it is, we should be doing it openly. We should be doing it unafraid, cheerfully, knowing that he is with us, will be giving us the tools and the strength to carry out what he wants. Amen. Let us pray. Our colic for the day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, at this time, remember that going up to Jerusalem cost Jesus his very life. So we come before you, conscious of the way religious words and holy phrases can slip so easily from our lazy lips and our hardened hearts. Turn us round again, we pray, by your Holy Spirit active among us and, um, and within us. What do we really know of your mountainous truth, your rock-hard integrity, the depth of your suffering for love of us all? Forgive us for the shallowness of our faith and the timidity of our following. Forgive us for the ready excuses we make for going our own way and claiming it as yours. Turn us round again, we pray, by your Holy Spirit, active within us and among us. Show us again how to be open to your faithfulness and to your freedom, that we may live new lives and be again bearers of the seeds of the kingdom of Jesus. Turn us round again, we pray, by your Holy Spirit, active within us and among us. And now as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In this special week, help us to leave aside our problems, to leave aside our wants and ambitions, to leave aside our fears, and to focus on the one who is faithful to the end, giving his life for our forgiveness. By our Holy Spirit, give us a new vision of our Saviour, and help us to give our lives more fully to him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and those we love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>